Hello there. I was sent in this uh, question uh, a couple of times, and um, I told this viewer I would answer it. <coughs> so let me uh, read this to you guys. Uh, it says, when are you going to answer why there are people who put shows and series out, such as Paranormal Activity, Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, claiming there are people who physically died or passed away many, many years ago, but they're still here in this world, not as human beings anymore, but as ghosts now. How is this related to believers who are saved and unbelievers who are not saved when they physically die or pass away? Well, we're going to look at this biblically. Now, the only time we actually see the spirit of a dead person um, is when the witch of Endor brings up the prophet Samuel's spirit from Sheol. Sheol just means the grave or the underworld. Now, I personally believe prior to Jesus' resurrection that the saints were kept in paradise but could not enter heaven where God dwells until Jesus paid the price for them and then they could heaven was open for them now we also see Moses and Elijah speaking to Jesus obviously they had been long dead uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration however they were there bodily it seemed because He's standing there in his glorified body, and they are both lit up brilliantly, glorified. So that wasn't their ghosts. They were physically there. We also see the dead saints in the Old Testament. Most people don't know this verse exists, and I'll read it to you. It's in Matthew. That when Jesus rose from the grave on the third day, that many dead saints were also seen resurrected walking around Jerusalem. So let me read that to you and we will look at what the scriptures say about the dead. Now I will I, I have a minority position. I believe that man is not immortal inherently. That man is mortal. Only God is immortal. Unless we are in Christ. Then we put on immortality and incorruption that's what the bible says and that if you don't have christ you don't live in eternal life and continue to live i don't believe in eternal conscious torment in hell i believe hell is the place where they perish they are destroyed their end is destruction and they are destroyed body and soul in the lake of fire because they don't live forever. You don't have immortality without Jesus. And the saved have to put on immortality. So if they don't have an immortal body, how do they live forever in torment? I don't believe that scriptural. The early church fathers, many did not believe that either. It didn't become really popular until Augustine insisted his view be orthodox. So there were three views early in the church, and I hold one of them, but it's now a minority position because some of these things were misunderstood. Things like where the worm dieth not, um, the fire is not quenched, um, this kind of thing. These are idioms that were misunderstood. So uh, I, I'll, I'll do a study on it, but it's not my, my goal is not to get people to agree with me on the state of hell. Um, I, I've been accused of denying there's hell. I don't deny there's hell. I deny that lost people have immortality. That's all. Um, so, we don't have to agree on that. I'm fine with it. If if I grew up with eternal conscious torment, um, I just don't think scripture supports that anymore. But that's my position on it. So, um, I, I'm happy to explain it to people. And you'll be surprised at the list of verses that actually support it so uh with that being said i am going to show you 
uh, some very clear verses on what the Bible says happens to the dead. So when when we look at scripture here, we also have to remember believers are not called dead. We're not dead. We're the living. Just like he says he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who clearly died physically, but he speaks of them in present tense. That means God is the God of the living. They're still alive, not the dead. So he's still their God, and um, they are with him. So when you see these things on these shows, it is, uh, I believe, evil spirits mimicking dead people in order to open the door through trauma or grief, hoping that someone will allow them into their life. And then they can build some kind of spiritual attachment or addiction in them and come in and utterly destroy that person. But they'll come in. It might appear like this beautiful, sweet, innocent child. But this is what it really looks like. Remember that. For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Don't be deceived. But they'll come in as a soothing voice, a good spirit. Maybe even warn you of an uh, impending disaster. You know, the ghost saved our life. It's to build trust so that you continue allowing it to remain. Now, I will not say that absolutely 100% a lost person's spirit, is it possible sometimes? Because there's difference in time and space. Maybe they haven't gotten to where they're going to get yet. I don't know. I can't say it 100%. But I'm saying, I'm leaning on the nah. Whatever you run into that claims to be a ghost is not good. It's not good. Everything that's of God is with the Lord. The saved are with the Lord. Now, that is not to say that God would not allow a loved one to come into a dream to comfort someone. I don't know. I'm not going to limit God. All right. I'm not trying to discount anyone's personal experiences that they had that comforted them. I've heard people say that their 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 dead child has come and visited them uh, shortly after passing away. I don't know the time. Some tribes uh, of Native Americans believe that the spirit stayed earthbound for three days. Some believe seven days. I mean, it just depended. But the time is different. I can only go by what scripture says. So I would uh, say do not engage and I warn people that it's so cruel, I know, when you're grieving over someone that you've lost in your family or a friend, you'll often see paranormal activity stir up. One reason is sometimes spirits are attached to people and when they pass on, they got nowhere to go. Another reason is they're hoping that you engage with them thinking that it's a dead loved one. Uh, and then they've put a foot in the door. Uh, into your life. You'll see this on television. You'll see people will start to have tapping noises or something. Then they'll start communicating with it. And then they'll bring in a Ouija board or uh, a ghost box or something. And now they've got ridiculous parrot. It's just escalated and they don't get any sleep and there's stuff flying all around the house. It's because they're they're getting in there and, and now they've allowed them in there. And, they, and it's really hard to get rid of them because it's like a passive permission. So anything like that, uh, that manifests itself, it's not going to be good. Okay. It's just not good. And it's best to, I, I speak blessing over my home. I ask the Lord that he keep only his angels, his Holy Spirit, those of the light of, of, of Christ be allowed in my home and around anything under my authority. As the, the leader of my property, all my animals, my the boundaries of my property, all my loved ones, I pray over them. So um, I grew up in a house that had paranormal activity and the, it was a demonic infestation in it. 
and I could see it as a child and it was it was horrifying uh, but it would manifest as dead people sometimes too but I saw what it really looked like and it was like a court jester its feet looked like serpents that floated and had a big grin all the way up to his ears with a court jester hat and um, it was just horrific and um, I was tormented by this thing and I visibly saw it with my eyes as a child luckily as I got older I saw the manifestations but I didn't see it anymore thank goodness uh, so but uh, since I've come back to the Lord and really um, delved into my faith more in the last 20 years I, I haven't seen any kind of mess like that so uh, he, he gives us that authority we, we don't we don't don't mess around with it it's just it's never good okay and I I don't know why people that claim to be Christian go into these places and act as if these are dead people they're talking to uh, God would never leave, especially a child. He would have the angels or Jesus himself escort them. When my, my son's uh, grandma died, she the last couple of days, she would she would just smile and say, he's here, he's right, he's right here. And she would talk to him. And she said, the Lord was sitting right there and spent a whole day with her. And then one morning she woke up and just panicked. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? And she was so upset. And then the next morning she smiled and said, he's back. He's here. He's here. And um, when my sister-in-law tried to sit her up because she would cough real bad to give her medicine, she pushed her away and didn't want her to help her. And a few hours later when she shook her to give her a med, she was gone. So I believe he was there with her and escorted her home. She wanted to go. So um, nobody's going to be left. Like God's not going to leave a child here. So I, I'm with you on that. I, I don't believe any of these things are dead people. Now, if, if I will leave a, a small door in case there's something that isn't really discussed in Scripture for the possibility because we don't know time space and with the witch of endor bringing prophet samuel now it does not say that's a familiar spirit it clearly says he perceived it was samuel okay so it god allowed it this one time and then god took king saul's life for doing it, it says this in the scriptures for going to a medium for going to the witch of endor and going to the dead he took his life. He paid for it with his life. So, um, I do believe that was the one instance God allowed it. Now, that is also prior to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Meaning, I believe they were kept in paradise until Jesus' resurrection. And we see the saints walking around bodily. They weren't spirits. They were physically risen, and I, I'll give you that verse. Now, if you go over to Matthew 27 and start at verse 50, it says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. It, you know, it means his spirit. He let go. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept, that's a euphemism for death, for the, for the saved. If they died, they're not called the dead, they're called their sleeping saints, okay? They're not really asleep, we'll look at that. It's a metaphor, right? Because they never die, we never die. So the graves were open and many bodies, so these were physical, physical bodies walked around. These weren't just ghost spirits, okay? Of the saints which slept, arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many most people don't know that happened but once again it wasn't a bunch of ghosts flying around it was physical bodily resurrection of the dead walking around uh, and i believe they are ruling and reigning with jesus right now in the heavenlies as we speak so uh we see what happened to them there so 
Clearly, until Jesus rose from the dead, heaven wasn't open for them yet. But now it was finished and done. Peter says that Jesus preached to the dead. And he also went down to Tartarus, which is where the fallen angels are bound. Um, it's like their prison. And he preached his victory, he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, proclaimed uh, his victory to them. Nope, you're not getting out. So they, they were defeated. So we see this. Most people don't know that is in the Bible, but I showed it to you. Now, there's a few verses on, on death. In Ecclesiastes 12, 7, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So, saying the body will go to the ground, it'll just turn back into dust, and the spirit will go to God. And wherever he dictates that spirit go, that's where they go. Okay? So, until the time of the resurrection of all people, it says some uh, to the resurrection of life, eternal life, others to the resurrection of damnation. So, it is a bodily resurrection. Once again, not spirits roaming around. So, there's no evidence in scripture that this could be the case. Now, I do leave that tiny door open in case there's something, because I don't know everything. And scripture, in case scripture leaves a, a, a loophole for that. But I'm going to go by what scripture says clearly. More than likely, they're deceiving spirits. These spirits lie. Many times they'll tell you there's not a heaven. There's not a hell. There's not this. They, they everything to deny scripture. Now, are there lost souls allowed to roam around? I don't know. I don't, I don't see that actually scripturally. But whatever is floating around, it's just not good. How about that? Because anything that's of God or the redeemed uh, is going to be with the Lord. Not, not going to be here. So let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 9 here. And it says, let me go down here a little bit. It's talking about the dead here. Here you go. For the living know, this is verse, verse 5 and 6. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love and their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Okay? So it's not saying... That the dead aren't consciously aware where they are. It's saying under the sun. So once a person dies, they aren't here on the earth in everybody's life knowing what's going on. Under the sun means in the earthly living realm. Okay? They are where they're supposed to be. Okay? And they don't. They can't give you advice on your life. They're not here. All right. So whenever you do that, you're, you're going to what we would call a familiar spirit, a, a demonic spirit that is attached to you or your family, sometimes generationally, that knows the inner workings of your life and have watched you your whole life. And so they can tell you secret things and make you think that the dead person said it. They know what grandma said to you on her deathbed. They know that grandma gave you that gift when you were seven, that locket. You know, this is simply hidden information that the demonic gives people to make them think that they're dead loved one. And I'm going to tell you, it's very, very tempting. I have a friend that has lost a child and just devastating. I cannot even speak about it because I, the pain is so severe. I, I don't, would not even want to pretend to know what that kind of pain is like never want to belittle that person's pain but her family members started seeing a psychic claiming to and a mediums claiming to talk to dead loved ones 
and they said well look we'll pay for it you can I, I promise you matter of fact your child was at the last session and she had a message for you and my friend's calling me crying Renee I know it's wrong but I'm so tempted why do they keep tempting me oh honey this is when the enemy comes in and tries to get you to let him in and it's cruel because he always come when we're weak or broken so you have to resist that and I'm really sorry and her family members are Christian and they know better and I said let me tell you what's gonna happen honey first of all they're either gonna tell you what you want to hear and you know it's not really your child but you want to hear it or two they're gonna tell you something that's very upsetting to you to disturb you either way it's a liar and it, it's not her you know your child was saved she is with the Lord and you will see her again but all this will do is bring havoc to your life don't let the enemy come in and start destroying it so and she was grateful because I, I helped her maintain that strength and um, so she she didn't go through with it and she she was glad I told her the truth don't don't fall for that so let's look at some more verses here okay we're gonna um so it says that that they 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 have no more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun okay that's the key here because a lot of people use this say see they know not anything that they're not saying they have no consciousness it's not saying that either way it's saying they don't know what's going on under the sun what's going on in this world okay they've, they've left this world that's the key to understanding that verse so all right so <clears throat> now we can see here where paul in second corinthians chapter 5 is talking about how we got to put on uh, uh immortality for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved he's talking about this body we have a building of god a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens okay that's that's our heavenly body for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven and this is talking about our new body if so that being clothed we shall not be found naked so, so the key is we don't want to remain disembodied spirits for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, because remember, it's sinful flesh, and it's dying. Not that we should be unclothed, so we're not groaning because we want to take this body off, but because we want the glorified body that never gets sick and, and doesn't have that fight with sin in it. That Not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life see so we get rid of this death and we put on this eternal life in this body now he that has wrought for us the self same thing as god who also has given unto us the earnest of the spirit that means the down payment the spirit right is the proof of purchase as it were when you buy a house it's an earnest payment uh therefore we are always confident knowing that while we are in home in the body we are absent from the lord okay so while we are at home in this flesh we're not physically present with the lord in that sense and it says for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident i say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the lord so the obvious conclusion here is it's better to actually not be in this body so you can be in the presence of God literally, right? But that if you're in this body, you're not in his presence physically. And when you're out of it as a believer, you're in his presence, all right? So you're not floating around. So we have this promise of resurrection. And Jesus proved it he, that he'd do that for us because he rose again just like he said now paul tells us in first thessalonians 4 about how um 
those that have died already, and they were believers, those in Christ. He also speaks of those before the cross, you know, the sins of the past. Peter talks about that. That sins before uh, the cross. The cross also paid for their sin. And you see those saints in Matthew walking around Jerusalem, resurrected bodily. But they're not floating spirits, okay? So, uh, in verse 13 in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, we're starting at 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning that which are asleep. Now, again, sleep is a metaphor, like a euphemism for the dead uh, in Christ. Those that died in Christ, right? But they're not dead, because he's a God of the living, not the dead. They're still alive. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He also says, they'll never die. Because he is the resurrection and the life. So, so I wouldn't have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. We have this sure hope, because we know we're going to see our loved ones again. We believe Jesus. That's the hope we have. Four, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which also sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. So they're with him now. We, we just saw Paul say that in 2 Corinthians. Absent from the body, it's better to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So he's going to bring those people back with him and they get their bodies first then at this last trump the dead uh in christ come back with christ and then if you're alive at his coming you'll be changed you won't die we shall not all sleep as it says whoever is alive the generation at Jesus' second coming, and I do believe this rapture event occurs at the second coming, at the day of the resurrection. Because he brings the dead in Christ back with him. And then they who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds. So, I am not a believer in this, what's popularly known as futuristic dispensationalism. I believe I'm a I guess I would just say a partial preterist, but I don't believe it's all been accomplished. Like, I think Jesus can come back any day, any day. Nothing is keeping him from returning. His return is imminent any moment. So, if you can live with that, we can agree, disagree on everything else, okay? So, I'm not here to take anybody's hope. I just see, I'm telling you what I see in scripture. And that is, he comes back with those that have passed on so that means this event of those being changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye happens the same day that the dead are resurrected which is the last day the second coming so that's what i believe here but it, it's fine I, I, I was brought up in this dispensational teaching with the rapture and then seven year tribulation and three and a half years and all that. I don't believe any of that is accurate, but it's okay. We can agree to disagree. But what I do believe and I bet you agree on is that nothing is preventing Jesus from returning at any time. He can come anytime. So let's look at it. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So those of us that are here and alive when Jesus returns, we won't get our bodies before the dead does. They'll get theirs first and then we'll be changed. Okay, that's what it means by we won't prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. See, that's what it means by we won't prevent them. So the ones that come back, he will give he, the spirits will be with him. Because they're absent from their body, present with the Lord. And he they're groaning for their bodies. And he's going to clothe them with their immortal bodies first. Then, 
we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, that generation will not die. They'll just be harpazoed, raptured up, snatched away, and will forever be with the Lord. Won't die in this body, just be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So, I see no place for dead people to be floating around. Um, I do believe that they will take the the form of the dead that may have lived in that house to give validity because a lot of times they'll do like they'll start talking to a spirit oh my name's john and uh, i lived in the 1800s and you'll find a, a guy named john died in the 1800s and he was accidentally hung in the barn and wow that's exactly what the spirit said yeah they're just mimicking the information hoping that it will make you disbelieve what scripture says don't believe a lying spirit believe what god says because i'm telling you i've heard all kinds of chaos and and confusing messages uh that one uh, was it nick on uh, ghost of interest when they first came out he asked the spirit about heaven and the spirit says there is no heaven and he was devastated i was like why would you even ask him that God says there is heaven. Jesus says there is a heaven. Why would you believe a lying spirit? They're not going to say anything to comfort you. And even if they do, they're liars. So don't go to them for anything. They might tell you the truth nine times. But on the tenth time, you better believe it's going to be a doozy lie. It's never good. So... No, I do not believe these are disembodied dead people. These are, I believe in elementals. I believe in uh, like the fairies and the gnomes and all that. I believe these are spiritual entities. Uh, We walk in the invisible realm and the visible every day. But I believe there's far more in creation than our eyes perceive. So I think there's more than just angels. I think uh, scripture calls them the hosts, the heavenly hosts, spiritual entities. I believe there's elementals, there's spirits in the forest, there's spirits uh, of the water. There's, I, I believe there's a spiritual uh, uh, force behind most of life. And God did that because he puts order in the universe and that we don't see these things. But I believe a third of them, not just angels, angels just means messenger, all the hosts of heaven, one third of the spirit realm, approximately, fell with Satan. Bottom line, whatever is talking to you or manifesting itself as the dead, do not engage. I don't believe any of that is good. Go to our God. For spiritual answers and comfort. God bless you.